Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Formula One was not the only race series on this weekend. We had actually pretty much every race series going. But from the world of electric racing, we had Formula E from Mexico. And it's rare that you get Formula One, Formula E and IndyCar all in the same weekend. And I haven't watched IndyCar yet because I just haven't had time to watch everything. I'm getting there. But we talked about Formula One yesterday this is Monday, technically. This might not be up Monday. But Formula E presents a very different product. And in the two races from Mexico, we had absolute carnage once again. And the championship is incredibly wide open. So remember to subscribe and let's begin. I never really know how to start Formula E videos because there's so much going on it's hard to know what order to do anything in but I think the main point we got from Mexico is no one is consistent one race half the drivers crash the next race the other half do and there's not really one contender who has stood out this year as being above everyone else and Honestly, it makes it so entertaining to watch because you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to win. You don't know who's going to be leading the championship. So we go out of this weekend with Audi having their best weekend by far. Degrassi won the first race in Mexico with Rast second. So an Audi won too. It's been a long time since that happened, if it ever has. I'm sure Degrassi and Apt were first and second at some point. This was Degrassi's first win in over a year, which really is insane if you think about it when you consider how good Degrassi has been in Formula E over the years how terrible last year was and how badly this year has been going for him second race he was nowhere I think he got penalized for contact with De Vries but ruined his race I think he was last of the finishers in like 18th Rast he finished second in the first race I think he finished 10th in the second one so he got points in both races and he is right up the front as a championship contender Mercedes had an awful weekend. I think Van Dorn scored points in the first race, but I think De Vries actually retired from both races. So Mercedes, who were my pick at the start of the season and are actually the manufacturer leaders at the moment, they didn't have a great weekend. And honestly, they're probably the best team, but they aren't consistent. As I said, no one's consistent, but Mercedes seemed to win one race and then crash. But this weekend, they barely got anything. Same with Virgin. Freins was championship leader going in ahead of De Vries. Freins didn't score any points this weekend. Cassidy had a fantastic podium in the second race, but nothing from the first. Jaguar, they were there in the midfield. They seem to be making up places, but I don't think they scored a lot of points this weekend. To Cheetah, I think both De Costa and Vern had a retirement. De Costa crashed, actually, and Vern even had a spin himself, which dropped him out from fourth to eighth in the second race, and De Costa had sixth in the first. It's not being a great year for Tachita and yet they're second in the constructors and only three points behind Mercedes. I think Jaguar are like one point behind them. So it's incredibly tight in both championships. But the people you'd think would rise to the top really aren't. But this weekend, Porsche, it looked like they took their first win and it got disqualified straight away for a technical infringement which also affected Nissan. I think Porsche are cursed because really I expected them to take their first win by now and I did think he'd be Lotterer leading the charge, but he is having a dreadful year. I don't think Lotterer scored points again this weekend. I think he's only had one or two points finishes. I know one of them was like a second place. Or was it a podium? I can't remember what it was. But Verline has been the better driver by far for Porsche this year. And he had a fantastic weekend. Won the first race and was disqualified. And he should have been first in the second race. He was catching Mortara very quickly and... I think he would have overtaken him, but he made a mistake. And then I think maybe it was an energy thing or he got a penalty. He got dropped to fourth. So, once again, this was a really shitty weekend for Porsche. I think their time will come, but it doesn't look like it's going to be this year unless Verline can keep this going. And he is definitely quick. He was on pole for the first race as well. And I think that's his second pole of the year. So the pace is there. They just don't have the luck. 
to go with it. I think Verline is like 12th in the championship, but is still kind of a contender. You think 25 points will win, and I think the top 12 in the championship are separated by something like 23 points. So it can all change race by race, and it has been all season. There's only like four races left, four or five, maybe six. So there's still plenty that could happen. Lynn and Bird contact again, same as in Diria. So those two really don't like each other at this point. We had Vern was out after contact with Alexander Sims. I think Sims and Lynn both scored points, so Mahindra had a good weekend. But the second race was all about Eduardo Mortara, who really this year has, I don't know where he got his pace from this year. It's like Da Costa last year, where I would consider Da Costa a midfield runner. And so I put him 16th in my predictions and he ended up as champion. I can't remember where I put Mortara. Pretty sure it's lower than 10th. And he's now leading the championship after taking Venturi's second ever win. The first being Mortara in Hong Kong a few years ago. He had an amazing drive in Diria and even between then he's been near the top. He's had some bad luck as well. He had that crash in, was it qualifying at Diria? That meant he wasn't in the second race. I'm sure there's been other things that have happened to him. But he is so good this year. And if Mortara wins the championship for Venturi, it will A, be a huge shock, but a very welcome one. Uh, my prediction was Buemi winning the championship. Uh, he's currently 22nd. Uh, there's only three drivers behind him in the championship. One of them is Joel Eriksson, who's only had two races. Tom Blomqvist and Norman Natto are the others. So, my predictions have pretty much gone out the window. So, I honestly, I don't think it could go much worse. Some, I'm sure they'll find a way to make it worse, but my predictions are usually pretty bad. Luckily, I don't put any money on them. So, if I was going to give new predictions, I don't think Mortara will win the championship. I would go for... I want to say Nick DeVries because he has... When he's quick, he's quick, but he has a lot of bad races not necessarily his fault he was driven into again this weekend which i'm sure is not the first time that's happened this year but i am going to say mitch evans which i think was my prediction a couple of years ago that mitch evans was going to win the championship actually it might have been last year i think last year mitch evans i, I thought jaguar were rising up i think mitch evans could do it this year i think he hasn't had a win yet we've had eight winners from nine races which is incredible i don't think mitch evans has won a race yet i might have to double check that because i can't really remember but i think mitch evans is a top driver jaguar they've had a good year they're right up there in the constructors as well so this could be the year that mitch evans and jaguar come good i've been saying it since last year so i i'm right but i take a year to get right you see but Formula E was not the only electric series racing this weekend because we had the start of the Pure ETCR Championship from Vallelunga in Italy. I did a preview on it which was mostly touching on the drivers and how cool the cars looked. The cars all look awesome. They've done a really good job on that. I have issues with the format. I'm not sure. Um, some of the racing was good, some of it was kind of dull. And if you look at their YouTube channel, it's kind of a mess, the way they've uploaded it. And I can't find the finals anywhere. I've seen pictures and read a report of it, but I can't find the actual race, which I'm guessing it was on Eurosport, but they're not uploading it to YouTube yet. Um, maybe they will eventually, but... So I haven't seen the exciting race, of, but definitely there was some work needed to be done for this series. But they've even really admitted that this is like a test a year, and it's aiming to be ready for next year to get more manufacturers involved, which it needs. So, if you haven't watched it, round one starts with three cars. I think they're random draws for position. Three cars, seven lap race, most points for the first. And like rally cross, like the points go down. And so they have four of those because there's 12 drivers. They've only got six cars, so they're sharing cars at the moment. Again, that's something that might change and improve it. But, the first round is fine, you've got three cars. I mean, the problem really occurred at the first race when Baptista spun someone 
was it Georgie Janay? And that let Augusto Farfus drive clear, and that was it after lap one or two. So that was the first issue. The second issue is the gates broke on the third race, so there was a long delay for that. But I'm guessing with new technology, that's always going to happen. They, had, I think they've had a few tests, but nothing really proper. And this was the first real event. There was always going to be teething issues. The second round was a two-car duel, which sounds cooler in theory than it actually looks on the track. Because you've basically just got two cars going around. The third round was a time trial, so there's on their own. I feel like they've done this the wrong way around. Maybe start with the time trial, go to the duel, have three cars, and then the six for the final. The super final does sound cool with the six cars going around at the same time. But as I said, I can't find that and I haven't seen it yet. I will keep my eyes open for it. And I think this concept could work, but I think they need to think about it. And as I said, they are trying to court more manufacturers. So maybe if it's like five manufacturers, a bit more of a mix, it would work better. But that being said, there was some good racing. They've got some top class drivers. The cars look fantastic. It's quite an exciting idea. And one I'm sure they can fiddle with and get it working eventually. So that was my thoughts on all the electric motorsport that happened this weekend. No Extreme E, which I think we've got another month and maybe two months before we get another round of Extreme E. I'm not sure when the next round of Pure ETCR is happening, but Formula E will be back in about two weeks time, which will be very exciting as we kind of come to the end of the championship. Um, Formula E was way more exciting than Formula One as it usually is, I think, Formula One gets away with a lot more because it's obviously it's the prestige and the 70 years of history. Formula E being like five or six years old, it's still in its infancy really. And it's only gonna get better. And you still hear a lot of talk of Formula E eventually over like Formula One and Formula E merging. That would be the logical step forward as technology advances and we move more into electric everything. So that was my thoughts on Formula E and Pure ETCR. I enjoy both. As I said, a pure TCR has its issues, but it's not bad. If you go on the YouTube channel, it's free. Watch it. Formula E is always fantastic, so make sure you watch that. And subscribe so you can watch more of this if you want to. This week's a very special week because it is the second birthday of the channel. And I f Thursday, I think it's Thursday. There'll be a couple of videos up on Thursday. I think there'll be one before that as well. And I'll be doing a live stream on Saturday as a sort of celebration thing. And of course we have Formula One on Sunday. So this could be a very motorsport heavy week. And with the football and work and family, it's busy and I've been very busy. So I'm gonna keep trying making videos. I'm sure, I'm hoping I'll get everything done in time. So just subscribe for Christ's sake. Thank you very much and have a good one.